Our story begins with Kogarashi, a high schooler with psychic abilities who can not only see spirits roaming our world, but who can also clap their ghostly cheeks in a single powerful punch. And as such, the Chad Kogarashi doesn't fear any ghost or evil spirit, and decides to move into the cheap but haunted Yuragi Inn. But as soon as he gets comfortable in his new place, Kogarashi discovers that the inn isn't haunted by an evil spirit, but rather by the ghost of a high school girl who died there ages ago. And this ghost is understandably shocked to find that Kogarashi can not only see her, but he can see all of her. And for once, Kogarashi is the one who ends up clapped. But at least it was by a cute ghost babe. He's reawakened moments later by Chidose, the innkeeper, who welcomes him to his new home. Suddenly, more residents begin to appear, such as Nanko, who introduces herself by inviting Kogarashi to drink with her, but her inappropriate outfit just flusters him. Sugiri then shows up, and introduces herself by attacking Kogarashi and threatening to chop off his manhood. But she's thankfully interrupted by Yaya, as she pops out from underneath Kogarashi's blanket, and licks his cheek. And upon meeting his fellow residents, Kogarashi quickly realizes that of course, a haunted hot spring inn would only be inhabited by eccentric freaks. And to make matters worse, when Kogarashi then arrives at his room, he sees a fresh pair of unclapped cheeks sticking out of the wall. But after the misunderstanding is cleared, the ghost reveals herself to be Yuna, Kogarashi's new roommate, who explains that she was simply trying to hide from Kogarashi to avoid scaring him off like she did to every other tenant before. But despite their awkward first few encounters, Yuna expresses how happy she is to have a roommate that can actually see her as her human form, rather than as a scary white ghost. Meanwhile, Kogarashi thinks about how he can't exterminate a ghost as nice as Yuna, even though it's technically his job to do so. And Yuna reassures him that she has no intentions of cursing or tormenting him, as she's been alone for so long and is just grateful to have a human she can casually talk to. And with that, Kogarashi agrees to be Yuna's roommate, although he's a bit self-conscious about sharing a room with a beautiful girl. When they both find themselves unable to fall asleep moments later, the two begin to talk, and Kogarashi reveals that he used to be incredibly susceptible to being possessed by evil spirits, which led to him being possessed countless times and he became a burden to everyone around him. Until one day, he became a psychic's apprentice in hopes that he could fight off evil spirits and get his life back on track. But as they talk, Yuna sees a mouse and freaks out, and accidentally levitates the entire room, before apologizing and letting Kogarashi back down again. But when he accidentally falls on top of her and touches something I wish I could, unembarrassed Yuna throws him out of the room and into a nearby river, which is witnessed by a mysterious monk. The next day, Kogarashi gets himself a part-time job and celebrates his independence, while Yuna feels bad about how she treated Kogarashi as she hopes the two of them can become good friends. Suddenly, a monk breaks into Yuna's room and begins attacking her, in an attempt to force her to ascend to the afterlife. Meanwhile, Koga thinks to himself that if a spirit stays in the human world for too long, it'll become evil and eventually be sent to hell, and he wants to help Yuna ascend before it's too late. He arrives to his room moments later and finds the monk in the middle of forcibly ascending Yuna. Upon seeing this, Koga thinks to himself that perhaps this is what's best for Yuna so she doesn't go to hell. But when Yuna then says that she doesn't want to ascend yet because there are still many things that she wants to experience, Koga decides to step in and stop the forced ascension, before knocking out the monk with a single powerful punch. Afterwards, he reassures Yuna that he'll do whatever he can to help her fulfill her lingering regrets, so she can someday ascend to heaven before it's too late, which Yuna is incredibly grateful for. But when the monk suddenly gets back up, Koga pushes Yuna back while once again accidentally touching something he knows he shouldn't have, and is blasted out of the room, before landing right into the nearby hot springs, just as the other girls were entering it. And a furious Sagiri asks Koga to present his manhood so she can chop it off. And while Kogarashi is attacked, Yuna smiles and says that she hopes the two can become good friends despite her many faults and flaws. The next morning, when Kogarashi once again attempts to explain himself, an embarrassed Yuna causes more misunderstandings, and Sagiri attempts to kill Kogarashi in response. Nanko on the other hand forgives Kogarashi for his uncontrollable male urges, which just causes Sagiri to try and kill him again. Suddenly, their chaotic morning is interrupted when the monk from the previous day returns with even more monks, determined to send Yuna and her friends to the afterlife. Unfortunately for them however, the residents of the Uragi Inn are not regular people, and they refuse to back down without a fight. Sagiri reveals herself to be an elite ninja who specializes in exterminating evil spirits, and I guess monks too now. Meanwhile, Nanko is secretly an insanely powerful demon whose powers grow stronger by drinking, and Yaya reveals herself to be possessed by a powerful cat god, who she can call upon at will. 
Together, the three girls effortlessly make quick work of the monks. But when the monks still refuse to back down and swear they'll come back for revenge, Chidose uses her powers to bless the monks with ridiculously good fortune, and they all begin receiving phone calls ranging from getting a new high-paying job, to finding true love, and even to winning the lottery. And with this, the monks thank Chidose and promise to stay out of trouble from now on, unaware that Chidose's powers actually drain the person of any future luck. And after watching all of this unfold, Kogarashi realizes that if he's not careful around these crazy women, he'll be sent to the afterlife way before Yuna. Kogarashi's troubles continue later that night, when a sleepwalking Yuna accidentally sits on his face, and in her embarrassment, throws him out of the room. This is unfortunately witnessed by Sagiri, who's now even more determined than ever to kill Kogarashi. And because of all the recent misunderstandings, the next morning Sagiri and Yaya team up to kick Kogarashi out of the inn. But according to the rules of the inn, all disputes must be handled by a table tennis match, the winners of which get to force the losers to do any one thing they choose. Unfortunately for Kogarashi, he hates ping pong and his teammate Yuna doesn't even know how to play the game. But when the match officially begins, Kogarashi masterfully returns Yaya's serve, as he reveals that he hates table tennis because he was once possessed by an overwhelming table tennis coach. Not wanting to lose, Sagiri uses her shadow clone jutsu to fire back at Kogarashi, but Yuna inadvertently hits the balls back with her poltergeist abilities after absent-mindedly thinking of an embarrassing moment she had with Kogarashi. And upon seeing this, Yuna realizes that she can activate her poltergeist abilities by remembering embarrassing things, and begins to use her powers to decimate her opponents. However, when Yuna runs out of embarrassing things to think about, she brazenly lifts up her dress to show Kogarashi what's underneath, but this embarrasses her so much that she ends up levitating the entire room, and throwing everyone out of the inn. At the end of the day however, Chidose declares Kogarashi and Yuna the winners, and Sagiri and Yaya agree to never try to kick Kogarashi out again. But despite ending the day on somewhat amicable terms, Kogarashi accidentally trips on a ping-pong ball, and once again ends up touching something he shouldn't have but that I wish I could, and is immediately beaten up for it. The next day, when Yuna wakes up without Kogarashi in bed next to her, she panics and thinks he moved out because of her annoying sleepwalking habits, but Chidose reassures her that Kogarashi simply headed to his new school. But when Kogarashi arrives at school, he's shocked to see that Yuna ended up following him there, but remembers that thankfully no one else can see her. Yuna is so excited to be back in school however, that she absent-mindedly examines the skirt of Chisaki, the most popular girl in school, who immediately thinks Kogarashi is the one who lifted her skirt, and the whole class labels him a creep. Later on in class, Kogarashi introduces himself to his classmates and earnestly tells them that he is a psychic, and that he even has a ghost following him around, which is of course met by laughter from his classmates, who believe that he's an even bigger creep than before, except for Chisaki, who seems rather intrigued by him. After school, Chisaki turns to Kogarashi for help, as she explains that her plushies have randomly begun to fly around her room on several occasions. Chisaki is frightened by this strange poltergeist behavior, and doesn't dare tell anyone else because no one would believe her. But as a psychic, Kogarashi believes her every word and promises to help her out. When they then arrive at Chisaki's house, she becomes incredibly flustered by having a man in her room for the first time, and wonders if it was truly a good idea to ask a creep for help. But when Kogarashi insists that he can help rid her plushies of any evil spirits, Chisaki earnestly begins believing in his psychic powers, until Kogarashi begins violently punching all of her plushies, as this is the only way he knows to exterminate evil spirits, and is immediately met by a swift punch by Chisaki, which he compliments her on. After this, Chisaki officially labels Kogarashi a creep and kicks him out of her house. Undeterred by this however, Kogarashi sets up a trap to figure out who's been remotely possessing Chisaki's plushies, as he didn't find any evil spirits in them when he was savagely beating them up. Later that night, the plushies come to life again, and become even more terrifying as they begin shredding Chisaki's clothes. Kogarashi arrives moments later and saves Chisaki, as he reveals that this whole time he was waiting outside her house for the culprit to strike again, and sets off with Chisaki and Yuna to find out who's been behind this poltergeist behavior. Eventually, Kogarashi finds a mysterious hooded figure, who summons a gigantic demon to kill him. But Kogarashi fearlessly stands his ground, and immediately decimates the demon in a single punch, which absolutely terrifies the hooded figure, who immediately reverts back to her normal form, before revealing herself to be Koyuzu, a ten-year-old tanuki goblin who is considered an adult in her species. And when they become adults, they need to enter human society and disguise themselves as one of them. 
But Koyuzu doesn't know how to transform into a human, especially not one with a pair of melons as amazing as Chisaki's. As such, she decided to possess Chisaki's plushies in hopes that she could spy on her and learn the secrets to becoming a beautiful mature woman like her. In response, Chisaki forgives Koyuzu and tells her that she'll gladly help her become a proper woman. But Koyuzu misunderstands this as an invitation to examine Chisaki's perfect milk buns, which of course embarrasses her greatly, while Kogarashi pretends to not have seen a thing. Fearing that Koyuzu would be dangerous out on her own, they take her back to the inn, where she quickly befriends the other girls, and is mesmerized by their womanly traits too. The next day at school, Chisaki thanks Kogarashi for all his help, and thanks Yuna too, even though she can't see her. And from that day on, Chisaki and Kogarashi become good friends, as she's the only one of his classmates who actually believes he's a psychic. And much like Kogarashi, ninjas of Sagiri's clan are also psychics, and their job is to use their superior ninjutsu abilities to exterminate evil spirits. In her everyday life however, Sagiri is just a normal girl who attends Kogarashi's high school, and hides her true ninja identity, despite wearing a not-so-subtle shuriken hairpin and being a feared martial artist. But on one particular day, Sagiri informs Kogarashi that she needs his help in stopping an evil spirit that has recently been attacking couples. And while Kogarashi pretends to be Sagiri's boyfriend later that night, the monster eventually appears, but its attacks melt Sagiri in Kogarashi's clothes while they fight, which greatly embarrasses Sagiri. But as they continue to fight, Sagiri puts aside her embarrassment and creates an opening for Kogarashi, which he uses to finish off the monster in a single powerful blow, which fortunately for us destroys the remainder of Sagiri's clothes. Despite this, she's still grateful to Kogarashi for his help, and finds him to be a nice person, but gets embarrassed when she thinks about him again the next day. Some time later, Chidose announces that she needs to be away from the inn for a while, and won't be able to cook their meals every day as she usually does, so while she's away, the others take turns cooking. Yaya is the first to try, but just serves a bunch of cat food. The second meal is taken care of by Nanko, who just buys a lot of beer and junk food. Yuna takes care of the third meal, and although her cooking looks amazing, she uses the wrong seasoning because she can't taste the ingredients, and her food is inedible. The overly confident Sagiri is then in charge of the fourth meal, but her cooking is so bad that she inadvertently poisons everyone. But when it's finally Kogarashi's turn, he serves exceptionally delicious grilled fish, which he learned to cook while being possessed by a master chef. Everyone is shocked by how delicious Kogarashi's cooking is, and as a result, Yaya begins following Kogarashi around everywhere he goes, even when he's taking a bath, in hopes of tasting his godlike fish again. To please her, Kogarashi decides to cook Yaya his delicious grilled fish again, only to find out that Yaya doesn't actually want to just eat it herself, but also wants to share this delicious fish with the cat god, who also absolutely adores it. At the end of the day, Yaya and Kogarashi become good friends, and she continues to occasionally follow Kogarashi around, which is a way for cats to express their affection. A few days later at school, Chisaki asks Kogarashi if it's possible for her to learn more about Yuna, the ghost he claims is following him. And since Yuna also wants a human friend, Kogarashi gives the girls the idea to communicate together using a notebook. And the two girls have a fun time writing to each other all throughout class. But when Chisaki asks Yuna where she lives, and Yuna replies that she lives and sleeps with Kogarashi, Chisaki becomes incredibly flustered. After class, Yuna apologizes to Chisaki for being the one who lifted her skirt up, and explains that she just wanted to examine her uniform. In response, Chisaki decides to take off her uniform so Yuna can get a better look at it. But Kogarashi then accidentally enters the room just as the girls are changing, and is immediately punished for it. Later on after school, Chisaki decides to take a picture with Yuna, and is a bit disappointed when Yuna just looks like a terrifying ghost. But Chisaki then edits the photo to make Yuna look cute rather than scary, which brings Yuna a tremendous amount of joy, and the two become great friends. When Kogarashi and Yuna then return to the inn, Kogarashi learns that Nanko is actually a famous manga artist, and in order to help her meet her deadline, she has Kogarashi roleplay as her boyfriend for inspiration. So the two of them mimic what it's like to be high schoolers in love, while Nanko's editor takes pictures. But the more they roleplay, the more embarrassed Kogarashi gets, until he finally reaches his limit. At the end of the night however, Nanko finishes her manga thanks to Kogarashi, and explains how she surprisingly doesn't drink when drawing, and Kogarashi is surprised to see this more serious side of her. But as soon as she's finished working on her manga, she immediately gets drunk again and embraces Kogarashi, which flusters the other girls. 
The next day, Kogarashi asks Yuna if she wants to do something to clear her lingering regret so she can ascend to heaven, but Yuna is unsure about what she wants to do, so Chidose decides to set the two up on a date at a newly opened hot spring, which they agree to, despite being greatly embarrassed by the idea. And as they head to the hot springs, Yuna reveals that she had always wished to go on a date with a boy, but never had the chance before today. Because of this, Kogarashi tries his best throughout the day to make this date amazing for Yuna, and they do end up having a wonderful time together. But since Yuna is a ghost and no one else can see her, they're not really able to spend the date like a regular couple. At the end of the date however, Yuna reassures Kogarashi that he doesn't have to try so hard, and says she'd love to someday come back here again with him, but on a real date. The next day, two strangers, Ryuga, the black dragon god, and Oboro, his loyal servant, suddenly arrive in town, in search of a suitable spouse for Ryuga. The two have traveled to countless cities and met many women, but none of them could meet their requirements, as Ryuga wants a woman with strong spiritual powers. Suddenly, the two come across Yuna and Ruga is immediately smitten by her beauty. He approaches her without warning and confesses his love to her, which Yuna responds to by knocking him away with her poltergeist powers. Impressed by her spiritual powers, the black dragon god decides to make Yuna his wife, and drags her off to his castle against her will, as she's suddenly unable to affect him with her poltergeist. Meanwhile Koyuzu watches Yuna being taken away, but is also too weak to stop it. She then tells Kogarashi and Sagiri about it later that same night, and the two immediately head out to rescue Yuna. Meanwhile, Ruga has Yuna cosplay various outfits for his enjoyment. At that same time, Kogarashi and Sigiri find the dragon god's castle below a lake, but also find that there are many evil spirits guarding the place. Since the dragon god is so powerful, Sigiri decides to use Kogarashi as a decoy to lure him out, while Sigiri and Koyuzu take this opportunity to secretly infiltrate the castle and rescue Yuna. But while Kogarashi is captured and beaten by Ryuga and his guards, he manages to buy time for Sigiri by lying to the dragon god about all the naughty fun he's had with Yuna, which makes Ryuga incredibly jealous. Meanwhile, Sigiri smoothly infiltrates the room where Yuna is held, and immediately begins to fight with Oboro. But despite just being the dragon god's servant, Oboro proves to be incredibly powerful too, and defeats Sigiri with relative ease. Oboro then tells her master that Sigiri's spiritual power is also very strong, and asks him to marry her as well, which he agrees to. Angered by this, Kogarashi provokes Ryuga by telling him that he went all the way with Yuna, which he responds to by unleashing his dragon god fury upon Kogarashi. But just as everyone thought he was dead, Kogarashi gets back up and punches the dragon god straight through the castle and far into the sky. Unable to accept the defeat of her master, Oboro attacks Kogarashi, who merely blocks and dodges her attacks as he refuses to hit a woman. Nanko and Yaya suddenly arrive however, and Nanko effortlessly subdues Oboro with her overwhelming demon strength. With no other choice, Oboro lets Yuna and Sigiri go free, but she's still determined to someday make the dragon god family grow even stronger. The next day, Kogarashi wakes up only to find Oboro in his futon, asking to make a child with a strong warrior like him for the future of the dragon god family, which greatly flusters both Kogarashi and Yuna. The following weekend, Chisaki decides to visit the inn so she can hang out with Yuna and Kogarashi, but since Kogarashi has to work at his part-time job, Chisaki ends up eating and spending the day with the other girls. But when Oboro overhears that Chisaki is very popular with the boys at her school, Oboro asks her for tips on seducing Kogarashi so she can make a baby with him, which Chisaki refuses to answer. And later that night, when Kogarashi returns from work and lays in bed next to Chisaki and the others, Oboro suddenly enters the room and tries to seduce Kogarashi again. But he tells her that he would only do those kinds of things with someone he loves. Upon hearing this, Chisaki, who's pretending to be asleep, thinks that Kogarashi is actually a good man. Sometime later, Kogarashi, Yaya, and Sigiri start preparing for their upcoming exams. But Oboro uses this time as an opportunity to try and make Kogarashi fall for her by creating a love potion with the help of Koyuzu. But halfway through, Oboro forgets which of the desserts has the love potion in it, and Sigiri ends up accidentally consuming it instead of Kogarashi. She then suddenly falls madly in love with him and pushes Kogarashi straight down as she confesses her love to him. And although Kogarashi thinks Sagiri is very cute, he doesn't want to be intimate with her so suddenly, and ultimately rejects her. A few minutes later, the potion's effect wears off, and an embarrassed Sagiri reflects on what just happened after locking herself in her room. 
During summer vacation a couple weeks later, everyone heads back to their hometowns except for Kogarashi, Yuna, Nanko, and Oboro, who instead decide to head to the beach together, where the lucky Kogarashi is forced to rub sunscreen lotion on the backs of Nanko and the other girls after they beg him to do it. But his luck quickly comes to an end when he touches something he shouldn't have, and is once again knocked away into the sky by Yuna, where he ends up seeing a ghost girl standing on a cliff. After doing some investigating, the gang learns that the ghost died in a car crash and is waiting for her dead lover to come and meet her. Wanting to help the ghost ascend to heaven, Yuna and Kogarashi decide to help the ghost girl by tracking down her lover and confronting him. It turns out that the girl's lover felt guilty for being the one who caused the car crash and therefore never dared to see the girl again. And when Kogarashi then finds himself unable to convince the boy to reunite with his ghost girlfriend, he tricks him by saying that he'll be forced to destroy the girl with his spiritual powers if the boy doesn't go see her. And due to this threat, the boy finally musters up the courage to reunite with the ghost girl, who immediately beats him up for being such a reckless driver and for taking so long to come see her again. But the two ultimately hug each other tightly and apologize to one another, fulfilling each other's lingering regrets and finally ascending to the afterlife. And upon seeing the lovers fulfill their wishes, Kogarashi remembers that Yuna is still in the human world, and that her lingering regret also needs to be fulfilled. So he asks Yuna for details about her life when she was still alive. But Yuna says she doesn't remember as she's lost all her memories from that time. In response, Kogarashi promises that he will help Yuna regain her memories so she can remember her lingering regret, and reassures her that he'll always be by her side until her wish is fulfilled, which makes Yuna incredibly happy. That night however, Kogarashi has a vivid nightmare of his past, and accidentally gropes Yuna because of it, which of course leads him to once again being knocked out of the house. But as Yuna leaps into the water to save him, Kogarashi comes to realize that living in an inn haunted by a harem of cute girls isn't so bad after all, and hopes he can continue enjoying this blessed life forever with Yuna and the others. If you enjoyed this anime recap then make sure to check out my other content. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you all again in the next video.